is uh, Japanese potter Soji Hamada. Uh, he did a lot of work on the wet clay, just as I do, and uh, and I've, I've learned a lot uh, uh, about what can be done just from from watching him work. And one one thing that you can do is is to facet a piece. If I want to facet it, then I want I want this surface to be really smooth because to facet my pots I use a cheese cutter. Pardon? Do you have any tools that you just made yourself? Do I have? Oh yeah, a lot of tools I make myself. But this is a a cheese cutter from a you know grocery mm -hmm. store. Mm -hmm. Except all cheese cutters are not alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, this is a cheese cutter I've owned for about thirty years, <laughs> and when this fails, I'm in real trouble because it's just right for the way I work. And I <coughs> for the cub foods and buy, no, buy another, you know. Uh, well, the, the thickness of the wire, the diameter of this roller on here and all, all those things are, are different on each one, and so you have to be a little bit careful. In <laughs> fact, this, this cheese cutter, this old one, uh, this roller came loose, and so what I did was to epoxy the roller in place so it no longer rolls, but as long as it's, uh, it's wet, it'll slide down the side of the, of the pot. So it has some sentimental value? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> so it has some sentimental value too. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it has sentimental value in, in that I, I know how it works, mm -hmm. you know. I, uh, it responds the way I want it to. Was fastening a technique that Shoji Hamada kind of pioneered, or was that more no, ancient no, than that? No, potters have fasted pots since the beginning of time. Okay. Yeah. And I fasted it in a great many different ways, too. top edge of a faceted pot alone, but I learned that that flat edge didn't really relate to the faceted form, and so by pressing down on it a bit, where it's thin, it'll go down further, and you get an undulating edge which relates to the facets. Mm -hmm. 